so uh, most of the time you end up with the meat of the talk at the end when there's no time left. So <laughs> I put it at the beginning. So you've got time to digest a little bit. Um, and essentially here, uh, there's a couple of terms that you may not be familiar with. The quantum nesting of rhythms being one of them. Uh, during the talk, you may want to pay attention to things about cross-spectral correlation and nesting of rhythms because this is a key portion of the model. <clears throat> and it also suggests uh, that there are two entities, one being the mind, one being what we typically think of as the brain and the neural aspect of the brain. And uh, consciousness here is an emergent property as opposed to an entity unto itself. And here I will be using uh, the term the mind for things like intention, attention, motivation, covert states, um, not externally behaviorally observable. And these in neurology, which is where I come from, um, basically have um, a, a rich history of being monitored. The ability to intend or attend uh, or motivational aspects and perceptual set can all be identified as direct current field potentials within the, the uh, EEG. Um, classically, you can go back uh, to the literature. Um, the term Bereitschaft's potential uh, is associated with the intention to move. Um, we'll show you some data on this as opposed to just talking. And um, when we talk about the brain, the neural brain, um, here I'm going to specifically refer to neural networks because that's how the brain works in, in distributed networks. And uh, here, gamma is um, an EEG frequency that emerges from bound networks. So um, the, the gist of the model is that when the mind, which is glial, and the neural networks, which you can see as gamma, interact, consciousness is the emergent property. Now, you may think that this is a, a, a wild um, leap of faith to even discuss. However, uh, you'll notice that there's the FDA that has actually approved a medical device that's been used uh, for well over a decade now uh, called the bispectral monitor that's used to titrate anesthesia. And uh, as of five years ago, they had done over nine million surgeries where the anesthetic was titrated based on the relationship between DC field potentials and gamma. That's the secret formula within their little patented box that you, you get a, a, a little dumbed down box that gives you a number from zero to 100 and you, you hover them in the right range and, and you have a good surgical outcome. So uh, this, this isn't radical or a wild uh, theory, it's actually uh, the heart of a medical device. And when I talk about glia uh, being the source of DC field potentials, and gamma emerging from bound networks. Uh, this is uh, not um, my opinion. This is actually the position paper of the International Federation of Clinical Neurophysiology. So this isn't a wild uh, statement either, uh, but uh, very well documented. Um, their position paper on EEG generators uh, was published in 1990 by uh, a, a large group uh, headed by Steriati, who unfortunately has passed. Um, but they haven't reinvented the brain since 1990, so uh, luckily the position paper still appears to be fairly valid. So the DC field potentials literally can modulate neural networks. Um, you actually can turn on or off brain areas using the DC field potentials. The direct current field potentials control the AC EEG, the alternating currents that you see as the EEG, the oscillatory uh, patterns that we print out on paper when we still killed trees to do EEGs. And now it's all digital and we don't put it on paper typically unless somebody needs a report. And voluntary control over these direct current field potentials is well established. Uh, you can do neurofeedback, which uh, can be seen as slow cortical potential training. Uh, this has been done since the early uh, 1970s uh, in uh, Europe, typically. Um, the United States 
most of the neurofeedback people threw away the slow cortical potentials as an artifact, and in Europe they threw away the alternating current EEG as an artifact. <laughs> so, and until you actually get both of those together, you don't really see how the brain works uh, to uh, create consciousness. Um, yoga um, and that type of an approach literally can give you voluntary control over the DC field potentials. Um, and, and I. Um, I've actually published in a Medline listed journal um, a, a yogi uh, uh, from uh, Japan who came over and stuck skewers through his neck and his tongue, experiencing no pain. Um, and I identified the mechanism of turning off the somatosensory strip using the direct current field potentials as the trick that he had learned through decades and decades and decades of, of practice. Um, and uh, he's quite good at it. Um, it. It's not a fakir who does sticks all the time. Uh, he does this on rare occasion. Um, and, and I'll actually show you a little bit of that. And this isn't some esoteric thing that requires neurofeedback or extensive yoga training in order to, to do. Uh, when you simply shift your attention, you literally are shifting your DC field potentials. Uh, when you pay attention to your feet, and then your hands, and then your face, uh, you can literally track the DC field potentials from the location, the homunculus, uh, the somatosensory strip from the feet to the hand to the face. And um, I'll show you a, a small example of that as well. And then you can also ex uh, control these exogenously. Uh, DC field potentials can be manipulated using a variety of techniques. Uh, one of them that works very nicely is transcranial direct current stimulation. You can take a three volt battery and a couple of wires and literally modulate the brain function under the appropriate electrodes. The anode will increase brain activity. It modulates an increase or decrease of about 40% in the, the uh, cortical function. Um, and essentially, this is shifting the basal membrane uh, DC negativity. And as you uh, enhance the amount of negativity, if you put the anode, which is the plus electrode, above an area, you're literally increasing the negativity of the basal membrane and turning on that brain area, enhancing the amount of gamma and, and uh, beta content in the area. I told you I'd show you something with attentional shifts. Here, we, we actually have an example of somebody staring at a dot, but paying attention with a flashlight, as they say, of attention to the left hemifield, and the right side of the back of the head lights up with electronegativity. If you then don't move the eyes, you keep focusing on the dot, but you shift your attention to the right side, it lights up the left side of the back of your head with more electronegativity. So simply shifting attention, but keeping your visual focus on an area, but shifting your attention from one hemifield to the other can shift the DC negative potentials within the brain uh, in a very dramatic, dynamic fashion. This is Kawakami. Um, who's a kundalini yoga uh, expert. He's got a big school of people in Japan that follow him. Um, this was actually um, uh, him on stage with his physiology being projected onto the wall behind him uh, as he skewered his neck through uh, in, out, in, out, uh, kind of a, with a barbecue skewer. This was not a sharpened instrument. And, and although people here are going, ooh, you know, uh, when I present this at a university, usually they go, yeah, well, pierce something important and then we'll pay attention, you know, so. Um, so this, this is really not that dramatic to younger folks, but I, I can see people in the audience here squirming a little bit. Um, uh, so uh, this is culturally uh, less appropriate for this grouping than, than uh, some at the university where piercings are not at all uncommon. Um, <laughs> And the, uh, this was actually in um, Hasselt, uh, Belgium, uh, um, and uh, the press was there, and they wanted to make sure he didn't have a pre-pierced tongue, so he pulled his tongue out, and they, they looked for prior pierce marks and so forth, and it was, wasn't there. He wagged his tongue at the camera. You know, it's, he's really quite a joker. Um, and literally, his trick is to drop the DC negativity towards electropositive, turning off the alternating current EEG, and um, at that point, he does the stick, turns the uh, somatosensory strip back on, because once it's stuck in, it doesn't hurt, and he can sit there and, and uh, uh, on stage demonstrate the fact that he actually had no experience of pain, no change in muscle tension, no electrodermal activity, um, which electrodermal activity, if you, 
you're familiar with that. If you clap your hand next to somebody or uh, ask them to think about their girlfriend or something, about two seconds later you see this big 